Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Today I am showing you how to make awesome knockout designs in Cricut Design Space on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So almost exactly one year ago, I showed everyone how to create a knockout design sign in Cricut Design Space. And if you're not familiar with this particular design trend, a knockout is where you superimpose letters over another word and sometimes also add white space around the letters so that they stand out more and look more amazing. You'll most commonly see this design with a pair of first names knocked out of a surname, just like this, and it creates a lovely family sign. It's very pretty and stylish. Well, in my tutorial, I showed you three ways to make them using Cricut Design Space, Inkscape, and Illustrator. But things change as they do, and the method to make these in Cricut Design Space is no longer working. I believe that one day this will be a built-in function in Cricut Design Space, because I'm just sure it must be one day. But we don't have it now, and you all have knockouts to do, now don't you? And yes, you could use Illustrator, Inkscape, Fonto, or PDF screenshots to do this, but it's really nice not to have to worry about another piece of software, now isn't it? So I'm gonna show you how to create and make a knockout design in Cricut Design Space with a method that works as of right now, which is late December 2019. And I feel very confident that this method will, will work well into 2020 and beyond. Now, what I love about this knockout design project is how simple it really is. We can overcomplicate things or we can do things the easy way. This tutorial is all about the easy way. Yes, there are other ways to do this, and I list them all on my blog over at jennifermaker.com slash knockouts if you're interested. But using third-party software isn't easy for everyone, and the method that I'm about to teach you will work on all versions of Cricut Design Space, including the iPad, iPhone, and Android versions, and should keep working for well, pretty much forever. So if you'd also like to make this pretty home tile, that I just made. It literally took me less than 30 minutes from start to finish to make. You're going to need a ceramic tile that you can get from your local home improvement store for like a few bucks. They're so affordable. You're also gonna want some permanent adhesive vinyl. I used Cricut Premium Vinyl. You also need transfer tape to transfer your design onto your tile or your sign or whatever you wanna use. Tools that come in useful are a scraper, a weeder, a Cricut knife, a pencil, and a ruler and you can cut this on your Cricut Explorer or Cricut Maker cutting machine. Now the design itself is made entirely in Cricut Design Space using free fonts. It's really easy. So let's head on over to Cricut Design Space so I can show you how to make a knockout design together and then we will go through the entire process of creating one of these really cool knockout designs on a ceramic tile. Can you say last minute gifts for everyone? Let's do this. Step one, measure your tile or other surface. Always know what the dimensions of the tile, sign, or other surface that you plan to put your knockout design on so you can properly design it in the next step. Step two, make a knockout design in Cricut Design Space. So here we are in Cricut Design Space on a brand new canvas. Now let's start by defining the borders of our sign. We're gonna to go to templates and we're going to choose a basic canvas, which is right here, basic canvas, and we want a rectangle square, but we want it to be, instead of like a cutting mat size, we want to make it custom size, and we're going to make it 11.75 inches, because that is the size of our sign. And let's change the color to something that's close to our sign, sort of a marbly color. This will work. Now we know what we need, we're dealing with, where we're working, okay? Now, there's two elements to a knockout. There's the main words and the accent words. Let's first do the main words. That's the big chunky part. I'm gonna click on text and type home. And we're gonna make this bold and we're gonna make it bigger than this. Something more like this, all right? Because we're gonna make a home sign. So this is these are our main words. Now we need our accent words. And this is typically done in a script font, but you can do whatever you'd like. I am going to do it in my one of my favorite accent fonts, which is I Love Glitter. And I'm going to type 
welcome to our okay so it's just gonna say welcome to our home and I'm gonna change the font to I love glitter and this is a free font that's available online and you can find it at jennifermaker.com slash I love glitter and you'll need to install it and I have a tutorial on how to install fonts too so here is our font and of course it doesn't look so great we're gonna fix this up real quick so first of all our letters are uh, look weird right um, this is a script font in a script font your letters should be touching right so it's like cursive so what we want to do is uh, adjust our letter spacing until the letters touch I'm gonna make this a little bigger so we can see this better to do this we're just going up to the letter space menu and we're going to click this down arrow here down arrow until our letters are touching each other as well as can be we may not be able to get them perfect, but we can get them really close. So that looks nearly perfect. The biggest issues I'm seeing are that, well, really, this looks fine. The problem now is that the spacing between the words is weird. The cool thing about this particular font is that it has special glyphs that we can put in between our words to make the cursive all go together. So it's one lovely flowing line. And the way that you access the glyphs is different but whether you're on the Mac or you're on a PC or you're using your iPad. I am using my Mac right now so I'll show you how we do that. I go to font book and this is my font book screen right here and I choose I love glitter and I can see all of all of the characters in the I love glitter font and I would like to put hearts in between the letters in between the words I should say so I'm, all I have to do actually is select this and copy it on my keyboard, so Command C, and then go back to Cricut Design Space, double click the, the letters here, which brings up my text edit box, and then put, select that space in between my letters and paste the uh, copied glyph in. See, isn't that pretty? And if I go back to font book, it actually has some pretty uh, sw swoops, and I'm gonna copy those and put them in the front and back of my name, or my word, my phrase, whatever we're going to call this, and I'm gonna do this one as well. There we go. To access the glyphs on a PC, go to your start menu down in the lower left corner and search on character map and open that up. And once you're inside there, you'll want to search for the font. Like, so for example, uh, search for I love glitter. And then you have access to all of the glyphs, just like you saw me with font book on the Mac. And this is how you can see all of the cool things. You just click on it and then you click select and then you click copy and then you go back to Cricut Design Space and you paste it in. And that's it. That's all you do on the PC. Isn't that lovely? It's And it's nearly perfect. The only problem I see is between the T and the heart here and we can fix that. What we do is we actually go up to advanced, ungroup to letters, and then we select all of the text that we want to change to move, I want to move this closer. So let's, I selected all of this text. Now I'm going to hold on my shift key and I'm going to click and drag it over until it meets just like this. And now it's awesome. And now I select everything and I do weld. And this text is ready to go. So we now have our main words and we have our accent words. Now in a knockout, you put your accent words on top of your main words like this and let's change the font so we can see that better font color we're going to change this to red so technically I could do a couple things right now and be done and ready to cut this out for let me give you an example we're going to duplicate this so we have an extra copy whenever I do any kind of design work it's really nice to have a, to work on a duplicate copy so you always have that unmodified copy to play around with so I could simply select both of these layers right here, our accent word layer and our main word layer, and click slice. And if I do that, what happens is the letters get sliced out of the word home. And we can just delete all of the extra bits here. And we are left with something that looks like that. Let me move this out of the way. So we're left with something that looks like this. 
And then we have our welcome line up here. I'm gonna duplicate that. And we can put that right into place right here. And we can, if we want, go ahead and cut this out right now. This looks nice. The problem is that, and you probably can see this, is that really the welcome to our line is not very easy to read on top of the big bold home. So what a lot of people like to do is create an outline around this text. This is where the complicated part comes in, right? So if you don't wanna do this, you're good to go. Have fun. You can move on and start doing your, your vinyl or whatever you want. If you want this line to show up better, you need an outline around it. There's a lot of different ways to do that. You can do it, uh, most of them are outside Cricut Design Space. You can do it in Inkscape, you can do it in Illustrator, you can do it in an iPad app called Fonto. You can even do it by doing some funky things with print then cut and save to PDFs and importing. Honestly, most people find all of those really very challenging. If you're not one of those people and you get it, awesome, that's great. But for the rest of you who are challenged by all these extra things, I want to show you a simpler way that you can do this right inside Cricut Design Space, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this one. So we have just this welcome to our home and it's just these two layers, right? So what we are, our goal is to get this welcome to our home, like we want an outline around it so that our line stands out more against our main word. So let me tell you how I'm doing it. So what I do, first of all, like I said before, duplicate everything so you have an extra copy of it. And we're just gonna put this down here out of our way. Now we're gonna zoom in to our original version, which is right up here, so we can see it just like this. So this is, this is close enough. And what we're going to do, it's really not that difficult, we're actually just simply going to duplicate this layer, our welcome layer, many times and offset it each time just a little bit, creating a bubble around our words. So let me show you what I mean. So I am going to duplicate this right now. I'm gonna right click on my layer and choose duplicate and I get this. So I actually want to bring it up so it's essentially on top of I, what I have right now, but. I, I'm going to move it down just a touch like this. I can move it down more. I can do kind of something like this, which is pretty good actually. I think I'll do this. So we're gonna move it down, okay? We're going to duplicate it again. Oops, yeah. And this time I'm going to move it. Um, so here is where the original was and this time I'm gonna move it like one over like this. Okay, you see what I'm doing? Duplicate it again, click and drag it, and this time it's going to go up a bit. And again, and this time it's going to be over a bit. And if you need to, you can scroll over so that you can see all of your lines, right? So you see what I'm doing here, right? Now I wanna go ahead and we're gonna do this step by step so you can see how to do this and refine this. So right now this will definitely create an outline around our word and we're gonna select all of those layers and you can see five layers, we can see them over here and we're gonna click on weld, just like that. And we get this kind of, <laughs> this kind of um, a definitely uh, bubblier word, a little bit rough around the edges, but still pretty good. And now we wanna select this new line that we've made and our home line and we're gonna slice it so you can see how this works. So we've sliced it, now let's delete all the extra bits. Is that the extra? Not quite. This last one always gets behind here. All right, so let's go down here and grab a copy of our, because we made, remember we made a copy of this, so let's duplicate that line. So we always have that there, and let's bring it into position to see how it looks. So you see, we're definitely creating a bubble around our words. It's a little rough, yes, but it was also really quite easy to do. So you can say, hey, this is good enough for me, and continue on at this point, and just cut out these two layers, or you can continue to refine this. 
So let me show you how to do that. There's several different ways. The first way is of course, is to keep doing what you were doing. So keep duplicating this layer over and over and over, making small changes, filling in little bits that bug you, right? So just, just sort of filling in the, the divots, filling in the corners, however you wanna think about it, and just putting them into place and you know, trying to get each time all four of your corners like this. So we're going to weld this just like before. So weld everything together. Now we want to go ahead and slice these two layers just like before. So we select both layers and we click on slice. And we get all of these extra bits here that we don't need. And we can delete all of those. And we wound up with um, a more refined version of what we had. Let's take a look at it again. Let's duplicate our welcome line, move it up into position and put it into place. See, it's definitely looking better. Now you can just literally just keep doing this uh, slices. You will get a smoother, less choppy image. We can fill in these corners right here and here, all of this. But if you don't wanna just keep duplicating, there's other things that you can do. So let me show you how to slice with shapes. Click on shapes over on the left side and click circle. And uh, resize this circle that we have here. Now, for example, one of the things that bugs me is this L has like a little bump on top. So this is easy to fix. I can put the circle where that L, the top of the L should be, where it should be nice and smooth, just like this. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see that better. So see, there's the L and we've covered up that little bump. Now we can select the circle and our home and do slice. And we get rid of all the extra bits that we don't need. And we have a much smoother shape to our L. And you can go through and touch up everything this way if you want, but the truth of the matter is, is it really isn't going to be that noticeable once it's on, once you've, you've cut it out, especially if you're putting on anything that has any sort of a textured surface. It's going to actually blend in and that makes this technique really good for something like a sign because usually it's wood or it's a textured ceramic or something like that. You're not even gonna notice these little divots. You really aren't. And that's how you can make a knife out in Cricut Design Space without ever leaving Cricut Design Space. And I'm gonna go ahead and touch this up a little bit more and I will speed up the video so that you can just watch me work and it doesn't have to go quite so, quite so slowly. And there we go. That really wasn't that difficult. And we have a lot of control over what, how we want it to look. You can make this bolder if you'd like. You just need to do a little bit more um, layering and moving things out with your duplicate layers. Just remember the key is to duplicate, weld, slice, and then delete the extra things. And you just rinse and repeat until you're happy with your design. Now let's turn this into an awesome uh, welcome to our home sign. And we can go ahead and remove all of this extra bit here. And we're gonna make this smaller. And I can't help but notice that our canvas is missing. Let's go back up in templates and re-add that. Sometimes that happens. And we're gonna change this to custom 11.75. And again, we're gonna change the color to gray. All right, so here is our home part and I want I actually want our swishes to kind of extend out beyond the edges of the sign so I'm going to do it like this and then down here I am simply going to put our names the makers and naturally we're going to use a different font than that will match the other one Cricut Sands and uh, that's right here and we're going to make this centered and move it up like this and then I'm going to put an established line, EST2017. And make this a little smaller and put this right under here. 
And finally, I want um, a little, some little hearts or something at the bottom here. And I know that this font has some extra glyphs in it. So I'm going to go back to the font book. And I know that there's a part where it's got like three hearts right here. I'm going to copy those and paste them in and make sure we change our font back to I Love Glitter. There we go. And that will go right down here. And I will make that red as well. So our heart lines are both red. Everything else is black and this will look beautiful. All right, so I wanna center everything down here. So I'm gonna select all this plus home, but not our welcome to, I mean, I guess we could select everything. Let's just select everything and see what happens. And then go up to a line and choose center horizontally. And now everything is centered, but our red line is a little bit off. So let's just, only because it wasn't perfectly centered before, which we could have done, but I was looking at something else when I did it. And it's really very close. And there we go, this is ready to go. Oh, except we need to attach um, the lines that we, extra lines that we made. So what you wanna do is select everything that's black, everything that's one color, and it should all be attached just like this. Now, these letters will stay, I mean, you don't have to do this, you could do it individually, but this is much better. It'll be much easier to make sure everything is centered and straight if you do it like this, trust me. And this is now ready to go and cut onto vinyl. So we can click make it, and it's gonna cut this layer in black, and it's gonna cut this layer in red. Now, you'll note that it's actually, this is 13 inches long. Maybe I don't actually want that. Let's go back. I don't really want to cut that much vinyl. So I don't really need it to be this long, do I? I just want it to fit on a 12 inch mat. So let's select everything and drag it in so that it's under 11 and a half inches so it fits on our mat, because that's useful. I guess I didn't really have to have them at the edges like that. That actually still looks really nice. I like that. Um, I guess I could Bring this down a little bit, kind of balance things out. There we go, that looks good. All right, now let's click make it and see if we got everything onto, we did. So there's our black layer and here's our red layer and this is much better. That was too much vinyl before. So uh, let's go ahead and make this and put it all together. For step three, you're gonna cut out your vinyl. So take a piece of vinyl and I'm using Cricut Premium Vinyl that's cut to the right size and put it onto your green standard grip cutting mat and turn on your Cricut to make sure the fine point blade is installed. Load your mat and press the flashing button to start cutting. Step four, weed your vinyl. Now, once your vinyl is all cut, you're gonna to wanna to remove the excess vinyl from your design. I like to put my vinyl on a cutting mat because it, it's often usually like really curly and kind of hard to manage and if I put it on the mat it's a lot more stable. So just remove all of the excess vinyl. Now when it comes to weeding one of the script fonts, especially I Love Glitter, it's going to take some patience. It's a very skinny font and it's the lines are very delicate, especially if you make a small sign like I have here. And one thing I want to note is that the first time I cut it, I had the hardest time with it. And I thought it was just me. And then I, because I'm not, I really am not very good at weeding. But by the end of it, I'm like, mm, maybe it's not me. And so I took my blade and I cleaned it with an aluminum foil ball and I cut it again. And the second time, it weeded much better. You can see the difference here between the two. The top, the top one is the first one I did, and the bottom one is the second one I did with the cleaner blade and you can see that it weeded much better without any mistakes. Step five, apply transfer tape to your vinyl. Now it's important that you put a piece of transfer tape on your finished weeded vinyl. That's how you're gonna transfer it from the carrier sheet that's currently on onto your tile or your sign or whatever you're putting onto. I recommend use the taco method. 
so you fold your transfer tape like this and then you apply it to the center of your design and then smooth from the center outward and that helps to minimize wrinkles and bubbles and it works really well and once you have that transferred you can just pull it right off of your mat if you still have on your mat like I did and then you'll want to take the backing off the so the carrier sheet that's on the back of your vinyl that has to be removed as well now the one for the red vinyl just came off right now but not the black and you'll note that I'm doing one of the red lines but not both of the red lines together and that's because but for that second line the line with our knockout text we're going to want to do that separate so that we can make sure it's perfectly aligned Step six, apply vinyl to your tile or sign. This is the last step. So get out your tile, measure this, where the center is. Just use a pencil because it'll just come off later and mark the center at the top and the bottom. And I also recommend that you draw a straight line across the middle, approximately where you think your main word is gonna go. So just to help you make sure that it's straight. So you want to locate where the center of your vinyl decal is and then make sure that you're putting that into the middle of your tile where you marked it. And also compare your main word to your drawn line to make sure it's straight. Now the nice thing actually about putting on something that has a rough surface like this tile is that um, it's actually pretty easy to reposition if you don't get it in quite the right spot the first time. Unlike other surfaces like say glass, which once you stick it on there, it's staying on there for good for, <laughs> it's not, you're gonna be peeling it back up. Uh, but on the ceramic with the rougher surface that you can reposition it and until you have it in the right spot. Once it's in the right spot, you'll want to use your scraper to scrape that down really well. And you're, it'll you know put some effort into it because it, the surface is rough, it does take a little extra time and effort to make sure that that vinyl is adhered well to your tile. And when it's all done, start pulling at one corner. If any of the vinyl starts to lift up as you're pulling it off, just use your scraper, just you know, put the transfer tape back down, and use your scraper to really, really work at that corner or that edge that's pulling up. And then slowly work your way all the way across until your entire image is transferred. Now it's time to put our knockout line onto our main vinyl. So peel off the carrier sheet that you've already transferred to your transfer tape, of course. This is probably the trickiest part to the whole project. You just want to line that up so that you have an even amount of white space all around your knockout text. And it might take a little bit. If you're working on a tile like this, you can reposition it. If you're not, you'll want to be more careful. Once you've got it in place, just scrape it down so it's really well adhered. And then you can carefully remove the transfer tape. It's very thin vinyl, so you'll want to hold it down as you pull it off so that it doesn't want to pull it off of your surface. But otherwise, that's it. It's pretty awesome. And don't forget to remove any pencil line that you put on your tile. Just erase it. It comes right off. And that is it. That's all you have to do to make one of these. They're very quick and easy. You can make them for all of your friends and family. They don't cost very much at all. And they're such a lovely personal gift. I love making these and I hope that you will too. Nako designs are so pretty and I love seeing your designs. Please be sure to share a photo of your designs over at my Cricut Crafters Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And if you get stuck anywhere during this process, just leave me a question here in the comments or ask in our group. We all love to help. Now don't forget, I'm giving away a Cricut cutting machine because I know lots of people out there still need one. You can enter for the chance to win your own cutting machine and get all the details over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And that's it for today. Now tomorrow, I'm not quite sure what I want to show you. Either I want to show you how to make cute socks with sayings on the bottom, right? Perfect for like hanging out for the holidays. Or I want to show you how to make winter window clings. Which one would you rather see? Socks or window clings? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, I'm always open to your project ideas. If you have things that you want to make, let me know because if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. And I think that's it. Until tomorrow, this is... <laughs>
Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.